frustrated. And then six months later, they busted him and brought him down, and I worked to try to get the judge to drop the case, and they did. We blew that wide open. And then I don't even get thanks because a lot of the folks involved in it aren't even smart enough, I'm just being serious, to get what happened to them. I mean, it's, it, it's like Nigerian emails. I remember, this has been going on for about 16, 17 years, where you get the email that you've you that Prince Habubu or Habibi or whatever they say it is at the time literally has ten thousand dollars for you, but he's reached out to you because he's heard you're a wonderful person. They usually target women, and that if you give them ten thousand dollars, he will give you one million next week. You give him the ten thousand dollars, he goes, "Oh, the prince may be able to speak to you on the phone." Sorry, he's been arrested by King Agugu or whatever they make up. I mean, it's literally ridiculous. You look it up, these people don't even exist. And then you're already in for 10 grand con, so you don't want to admit it. And you, you, you finally have to talk to Prince Abu Boo, though, or BB or whatever the name is. You want to believe you've won the lottery. Well, you start telling friends and family, do not give them more money. It's not real. And they go, shut up. You're just jealous. I got that I'm about to get 5 million now, and I give them another 20 grand. And you go, no, it's not real. It's a scam. And even when they give them the next round of money, I've known three people that did this. They will never talk to me again. They will not admit they were wrong. They will not admit they got conned. Just like Obama voters or whatever on the free health care of Obamacare and they double, triple prices. And there was literally a talk show host I knew who I heard on air one day. I thought it was a joke when I heard it. This was like 12, 13 years ago. It was about 14 years ago announcing that he had been contacted by a Nigerian prince that wanted to fund his show. And I called him and I said, it's not real. And he literally went on air and said, I was jealous trying to stop it. And then later said, I jinxed the deal with the prince. I mean, it's the same thing. I'm like, look out for feds. They'll say I'm bad. They'll say, you know, violence is good, whatever. They'll try to escalate. Please watch out. And then that means I said they're feds. I mean, it's just so hard to deal with this psychology. And quite frankly, Wayne, very, very sad. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world and it's called shilajit and it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago as a matter of fact this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite thousands of years ago up in the himalayan mountains and in tibet and we wanted to put this in stuff for, for a couple years but we couldn't get an organic form right i mean so I, let's explain i mean we, this stuff's so good we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil up, from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're always claiming out. oil is really from decomposed a animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But So, so this is a true fossil uh, source? I mean, explain it to me. It is, uh, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over 7,000 different medicinal herbs and plants. And, it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and... And during the summertime and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. Infowarslife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Every day we see these kinds of outrages, these kinds of power grabs, uh, over-the-top unconstitutional actions by these government bureaucracies. And this happens because Congress has abdicated its power to these bureaucracies. They're all these little fiefdoms looking to expand their power base, and there are no checks on them. They have become legislatures, they have become their own police and their own courts, because in most cases they do these as civil actions so you don't have a day in court in many cases they just assess you the fine they take your money like that uh, not registering your paper airplane okay they can find you uh, twenty seven thousand dollars you don't get a day in court okay they don't charge you it's like civil asset forfeiture under the drug war they don't charge you with a crime they don't find you guilty they just take your property just take your money and so that's what we're seeing over and over again and that's a key part of this this is the tactic that obama is using to say, well, these are just going to be rules, okay? This is legislation without representation. Let's understand it. It's gotten to that point that we need to understand this is, is not only legislation without representation, we're back to taxation without representation when they can assess these fines as civil penalties and you don't get a day in court. Uh, so it's very, very dangerous. But let's go to uh, this particular clip on smart guns, Jakari. Yes, yeah, so let's go ahead and roll the clip. It's uh, Obama talking about smart guns and how he wants to have fingerprint activation to use a firearm. We're going to boost gun safety technology. Now, today, many gun injuries and deaths are the result of legal guns that were stolen or misused or discharged accidentally. In 2013 alone, more than 500 people lost their lives to gun accidents, and that includes 30 children younger than five years old. Now, in the greatest, most technologically advanced nation on Earth, there is no reason for this. We need to develop new technologies that make guns safer. If we can set it up so you can't unlock your phone unless you got the right fingerprint, why can't we do the same thing for our guns? Yeah, great. Let's do it. Let's treat everybody as if they're... Uh a convicted drunk driver and they've got to pass a breathalyzer test to turn on their car. That can help us find a missing tablet, which happens to me often, <laughs> the older I get. <laughs> if we can do it for your iPad, there's no reason we can't do it with a stolen gun. If a child can't open a bottle of aspirin... Yeah, let's go ahead and stop the clip there. Yeah, when you're talking about GPS tracking, it's like, hey, sometimes I lose my iPad and I yeah. need GPS tracking to find it. It's like, oh, yeah, where'd I put that uh, 38? I can't find it. Let me... Uh <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's one thing uh, <laughs> that's not the Attorney General was talking about before he went out. He said, well, let's have some type of bracelet or some other thing to where people can't use mm -hmm. the gun unless they're right there. And, I mean... It's going to happen, you know, if they make this nationwide, it's going to, unfortunately, it's going to happen. An officer's going to reach for his gun. He's going to have some gloves on or some other thing, and he's not going oh, yeah. to use this pistol. Oh, technology never fails, Jakari. Oh, never yeah. fails. Just like okay. a, the smart car never gets you a ticket or anything. That, that's yeah. right. Look, look, we, ha we understand where this is going. We know 
one of our big concerns about the government-controlled robot cars. And let's just understand that it's going to be the government that's going to be controlling them. They can shut down your transportation just like that. With this, they'll be able to track you anywhere they want. They'll be able to turn off your guns remotely. And not just the government. Hackers will be able to mess with your guns, okay, uh, and turn them off. And it is another level of safety. But this is something they're really going to push. Listen to what he said in his... Uh, uh, this is the White House talking about uh, what they're going to do. He says they're going to review the availability of smart gun technology on a regular basis. They're going to explore potential ways to further its use and development to more broadly improve gun safety. Well, they're going to embark on a, on a research uh, program uh, to come up with this stuff and then force you to uh, use that. Uh, they're also going to set up an Internet investigation center to track illegal online firearms tracking. And, of course, they're moving some of this power, Jakari, from the FBI to the ATF. Background checks, they're moving some of that to the ATF. Mm -hmm. uh, this Internet Investigation Center, another uh, agency to spy on you on the Internet, okay, without a search warrant. Uh, they're going to be transferring that to the ATF uh, instead of the FBI. I guess the FBI is a little bit too concerned for the, about the Constitution. They don't have that problem with the ATF. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I guess that's a good way to put it. Now, there's another thing that he uh, talked about in clip number two, guys, if we can get that ready. Uh, when he was talk talking about gun trust, uh, you may recall, David, uh, Joe Biggs and myself, we did that report. We went out to the silencer shop here mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas. And one of the things that they were talking about you could use, you could use a trust to have multiple people use a silent or a suppressor. You know, they call it silencer, but it's really a, a suppressor. It makes the gun hearing safe. It can also help, you know, somebody with their accuracy. Mm -hmm. And people complain about these suppressors. I'm like... All these people who complain about getting shot by somebody, want, don't you want the person to be more accurate and actually hit the bad guy, hit the target? And if a suppressor can help you do that, what's the argument against that? That's common sense to me. Yeah. Make the gun more accurate. That, that's common sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, this, this uh, ammunition law that was uh, put in uh, out in, um, they, they're trying to uh, float this out in New York. Uh, the two uh, women who did this in the state house and the uh, state senate they wanted to limit uh, your ammunition purchases to twice the capacity of your firearm during a three-month period. So if they do that, if they were successful in doing that, that would mean that you would not be able to practice with it so that you had real gun control, okay, yes. so that you could really hit gun what Gun control you were is using both hands. That's right. That's right. And, of course, they point out that this has already failed. They had a provision for that in the SAFE Act that was passed in New York State, and they were very embarrassed when Governor Cuomo realized that he didn't have any way to implement that. And then it was also overturned in federal district court in New York. They said it was unconstitutional to regulate how many rounds a person could have. But that doesn't, uh, that doesn't phase uh, Roxanne and Joanne, the two uh, legislators who are pushing this thing. They're going to still try to do that again. And understand, they are going to try to control ammunition. He doesn't talk about that, but that's one of the key things. Because if they can get a hold of your ammunition, then your gun becomes a club. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and run that clip about targeting the gun trust. We're also expanding background checks to cover violent criminals who try to buy some of the most dangerous firearms by hiding behind trusts and corporations and various cutouts. That's We're also taking steps guns. to make the background no check way. system more efficient. Under the guidance of Jim Comey and the FBI and our deputy director, Tom Brandon at uh, AF, uh, ATF, we're going to hire more folks to process applications faster, and we're going to bring an outdated background check system into the 21st century. So there you go. Let's, let's get rid of the gun trust. And as you said, David, um, you know, some violent felon isn't going to go through the process of trying to get into a trust in the first place. That's right. That's right. It's, it's a very, you know, I mean, it really is, are, are the uh, typical street criminals, are they going to go through all the hassle of trying to set up a gun trust? That's the no. absurdity of all of this stuff. Yes. The fact that if you're going to be engaged in a criminal uh, activity, the last thing you're going to do is Let's go, go buy a gun at a retail facility, okay? <laughs> and if they're going to crack down on that, I, I can just imagine that the... Uh, the armed robbers and the armed terrorists are going to say, you know, well, we're going to have to put off our, uh, our heist here or we're going to have to put off the terrorist event because they were out of ammunition at uh, Walmart or, you know, they, they were out of AK-47s or whatever. I mean, they don't, they don't use that. Uh, as, they're going to go through the black market, and the black yes. market is going to be there. If we haven't learned anything from the war on drugs, can't we learn something from alcohol prohibition? And that is 
when you prohibit something, you have a vibrant black market, okay? We have more access to drugs because of prohibition. I've talked to law enforcement against prohibition, that organization LEAP. They pointed that out. It's like it actually makes it more readily available. It increases the virility of whatever it is that you're trying to outlaw. So you're